This gets way more emotional than you can ever imagine. Kaylee Stone is my daughter. And when she asked me if she could be a part of this 15 minutes, I thought to myself, well, it's fake, so I should be okay and it will be all right. When we talked about her being one of the teens that actually died in the accident, I thought, I don't know if I'm the right parent to do this. I'm not sure if I can handle it. When it got closer to the time, it became more real. And during the day's events, my emotions really just started to well up. And it's something that I pray no parent would ever have to go through and no youth would ever have to be put through having the chaplains come to your work and just pull you inside into a, an intimate situation and tell you that your child is dead and they won't be coming home is more real than you can imagine even if you know it's fake. Those emotions are there. I was involved in a drunk driving accident my junior year right after um, in the summer. I wasn't drinking. We were visiting with my aunt and uncle in Washington. It was the 4th of July. We were coming home from a fireworks display and a drunk driver who lived a mile from the scene of the accident knew very much that there was a stop sign and he decided to run it. My family, my aunt, and my two cousins were in that car. It hit us broadside. It spun us around and we went through a fence. My door was jammed and the battery acid just ate through my clothes and I couldn't get out of the car. I had to climb out. By the time I got out, my aunt had pulled her two small children out of the backside. As I lay there watching it, I'm scared and I don't know what's going on and I know I hurt and I don't know what's wrong with me. I see my mom's car drive by me and I'm screaming for her, but she can't hear me because when she drove through the scene of the accident, she didn't know that there had been an accident because we were both on the sides of the road. When the ambulance came to get me up, take me to the hospital, my parent, my mom and my sisters were waiting for me, but they didn't know what to expect. They just knew that we were in an accident. And fortunately for me, I only had broke my collarbone and severed my nerve down my leg. But the passenger to the driver, they were both wearing seatbelts, but the lady in the back of the car was not. My family had to walk by her in a gurney while she was 90% beheaded. And I can't imagine what her family had to go through to hear that news. And it's all because this driver thought he was okay. That it was a smart choice for him to drink and drive with his friends. That it was okay to run that stop line because he knew the area. That's something he will always have to live through. It's been a long time ago, but I still feel the pain from what I went through, I can't imagine what their families went through. So being on the other side of that accident, I never saw the other side of that until I had to speak to Manny yesterday. He's a really good kid and I, I, I know him. And it's just one mistake, one mistake that he would have made, one choice, and it took the lives of two children, two, two kids from their families. One that he could never change, one that he could never completely heal from because he has to live with it every day of what the choice that he made. If I could pray something for all of you kids, I would choose that you would never drink and drive. And remember that it's just not your life at risk. It's the lives of those around you. It's the life of your parents, the life of your family and of your friends. They will suffer far more than you would because it's something they have to live with every day that you're gone. 
when I think of Kaylee not being with me anymore. It makes my insides just scream. I can't explain it, but every part of your being inside just screams because there's nothing else you can do. And I, like you kids said, I would never see the benchmarks of her life. And as a parent, that's what you want. You want to see those benchmarks. You want to see them succeed. And knowing you can't, it's just really hard to think. It has much more of an impact, this program, than you can ever imagine on a parent. It's the little things. When I came home yesterday, I went to go and unlock or open the door. And the door is always unlocked because Kaylee's always there. She's the one that greets me when I come home. If she's in a good mood or a bad mood, no matter what it is, she's there. The door's unlocked. So just having to open that door and pull out my key just really, just really made me scream. Because it's a possibility that she may not have really been there. And that's very hard. I am so thankful that my daughter gets to come home with me tonight. I am so thankful that we get to proceed the rest of our lives with her. Provided you and she continue to make the right choice by not drinking and driving. If you teens can take anything from this program, Please take that. Your life is worth not taking the risk. Your life is worth not taking the risk for those that you may kill. Not only for the choice for you, but make the choice for your friends. Don't let them. Take away their keys, whatever you have to do. Make that choice. Because it's a choice that you can never change if you choose to drink and drive and kill somebody. Just remember the choices and the decisions that you make today will affect your future and the future of those around you and that you're close to. Please do not put your friends, your family, or yourself through this. Thank you, Lisa. Hannah, would you like to come up and say a few words? I don't think I can read this. Um, I will say the last 24 hours of my life have been horrible. Well, I'll, I'll read for Anna. Um, so I'm going to read this as, as she is um, going to be reading it for you. Right now, as I'm writing this, I feel so broken. I learned that today my son Dylan was killed in a car crash. I knew it wasn't real, but instantly I felt sick. I cannot imagine our life without him. He is our gift, and he is our only family, or he is our family. As a, part, as a parent, my job is to protect my children, and in this one instance, I could do, any, I could not do anything about it. They asked me if I'd like to go to the funeral home to carry out his, or this journey. I just couldn't do it. The thought of my son at a funeral home, even if it wasn't real, was just not an option. That is just not something I'm ready to imagine. Then I was asked to go to court for the sentencing of the drunk driver that killed my son. How can a mother do that? I would have to forgive him, but I don't think I could. Yet, I think he was just a child himself. How are his parents feeling? And the thoughts just keep coming. I know I'm at home, I'm in my house, it's empty. I'm trying to imagine what our life would be like now. Devin would be lost without his bro. He would be so sad. Tucker, our dog, he is one of Dylan's best friends. He would be lost too. 
How would Tom and I really be handling this? I honestly don't know if we could. All of his friends, how would I help them cope with this? He would be so missed. It just breaks my heart. Our children are such a big part of our lives. We love to watch them grow, turning into such great men. We look forward to seeing them, seeing what the future holds for them. What will they really be like when they grow up? What will their wives, what will their wives be like? How many children will they have? And will they turn out just like them? We have so much more to learn about our, about our children and from our children that no one should take that from us. No one should make that horrible, stupid decision to get behind the wheel of a vehicle after drinking. Make that phone call, make that choice not to be that person that changes so many lives. Any friend would be there for you. Please do not make a bad decision like this. It's something you cannot take back. You cannot give a child back to their parent, and you cannot give yourself back to your family. As parents, we cannot express how much love we feel for our children. It is so deep. I will say the last few days have really had my, had my emotions going. I am very grateful for this program, and I hope everyone involved will take something from it and pay it forward. We have to take care of each other. Please be responsible and safe. And P.S. Thank you, Dylan, for being a part of this. It makes us proud of you and the choices you continue to make. Thank you. Our next speaker is uh, Mark Roberts. And experience was not a simulation. And I want you to give your undivided attention to Mark as he tells uh, his story. Hi guys, uh, many of you know me as Mr. Roberts, I'm going to try to get through this, but as you know this is a difficult thing for all of us. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my dad, he was a great person. One of his favorite things to do was bird watch. From the time he was a kid, he would go out on these trips to find these birds, uh, he would travel across the country to find these birds and he would go all across America, and uh, he saw over 800 different species out of, um, there's only about 1,000 that are ever, ever seen in America, and he saw over 800 of them. He helped do research banding these birds so we could track where they show up, and he would take people on field trips to show them birds that they'd never seen before. He was an emergency room physician at Tillamook Hospital for almost 20 years, and when somebody would get hurt, they'd show up there, and he would help them. He would fix their problems. Most of all, he was my best friend, and he was my biggest supporter. When I was 16 years old, the same age as most of you guys, a junior in high school, I was on Christmas break, and my family, uh, my dad, my mom, my brother, and my sister. Uh, we went to Portland to go to a, a concert that my brother was playing at. And on our way home from Portland, uh, we were driving over the mountain a little bit after 11.30 p.m. and it was snowing. And I remember the last thing I said to my dad. I was, I was being a smart ass and uh, we were listening to the radio and my dad, he uh, turned off the radio and I said, what, you can't listen to music and drive at the same time? And then I put a pillow between me and my seatbelt and I went to sleep. And when I woke up, I saw two pairs of headlights coming towards us and everyone was screaming. The next thing I remember, I was being pulled out of our car and there was a man screaming profanities and I could see the front end of our, our van was smashed in and my dad was sitting in the, in the driver's seat. Me and my sister were taken to Tillamook Hospital where my dad had worked for so long. 
while my dad was taken to Portland. The rest of the doctors that worked with my dad filed into the room and told me and my sister that my dad had died on the way to the hospital. We do these mock accidents to try to give you guys an idea of what it's like to lose somebody that we care about. But when my dad left, he never came back. It's been almost 10 years now. The day after Christmas this year will be 10 years for me. And it still hurts every single day. I don't get any more advice about the girls I like, about school, about careers. He wasn't there to see my band play our first show. He wasn't there at my high school graduation, or my college graduation. And he won't be there on the day when I get married. He can't give me stitches when I get hurt. He can't go camping with me. When life gets tough, I have to go on without him. Drunk driving is for idiots and fools. I want you guys to remember that you may not have a clear head when you're drunk. You may not remember the statistics. And you need to make that decision to hum humble yourself Call your friends, call your family, sleep on a couch, walk home, whatever it takes to avoid jeopardizing yourself and other innocent people. Don't be the one to ruin someone else's life and don't let your friends drive drunk. It isn't cool. It's real and it happens every 15 minutes. Thank you.